We all have this dream or imagination about the perfect love story where we fall in love with someone attractive, they love us back, we go through these different kinds of emotions of excitement, thrill, butterflies in our stomach, we get into a relationship with them, they accept us for whoever we are and we accept them for whoever they are. It's almost like a perfect flawless relationship where you just you know, go together, right? <laughs> where you just go together and everything just is so perfect and you get married, have children together probably and then live a happy life forever together, right? Right? <laughs> we soon realize that what we think is far from the truth and that love and relationship is not perfect. Companies and some individuals make billions of dollars out of it. Some make it ethically and others make it unethically. Some can do anything for money and by anything I mean anything. It doesn't matter whether it's ethical or unethical. They can do anything for earning money. The Tinder Swindler, the popular documentary that chronicles the woeful tales of three women who thought they'd met the man of their dreams on Tinder, only to later say he scammed them out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Tinder Swindler, aka Simon Levi took the women through a roller coaster of emotions to be honest. He showed them that he's successful and has a luxurious lifestyle. He met with them. He gave them butterflies. He made them feel special. He made them miss him. And he made them fall in love with him. He just did it very well and it was very hard to recognize that he was a fraud until he started to act weird and started to you know, borrow a lot of money from them and basically he was doing it based on the Ponzi scheme like he was taking money from one woman and then that money was funding his luxurious lifestyle and then from another woman he was taking money and he was using it to you know, buy gifts for the other woman and then it was going on and on and on I mean he basically faked everything he faked from you know, claiming that he's a billionaire and he has a diamond business which he inherited from his father and obviously in, in a later on interview when after the documentary got released he said that everything of it is fake these women make some very serious allegations against you they say they were conned and threatened they weren't conned and they weren't threatened he even got a beautiful model girlfriend and who, who does not understand like why are these women making these claims and how it is coming? The document itself is a very well documented thing. It showed a lot of evidences. It took in-depth interview of the three victims. And they were really vulnerable in the documentary. They were seen crying, they were seen laughing and feeling joyful, feeling like they have a victory or something when you know he got caught or something like that. And then it's a complete turnaround when they're we're telling that he just got 15 months of jail, which is not sufficient, and according to or my common sense. And yeah, so overall, I think the documentary was pretty well filmed and it was very exciting and it was not boring at all. Whether or not the Tinder Swindler is true, it is high time that we start reflecting on some of the things which is happening in our society globally. Back in the days, we had a very limited number of options in terms of choosing people for friendship, relationship and other types of bond. But now, social media, internet and technology has revolutionized the whole space. We can now meet different people just from the comfort of our home. We can meet different cultures, explore different cultures, get to know about them, form relationships with different types of people just from the comfort of our home. And I mean, this is like endless amount of opportunity. It's like an overexposure of information and we can just learn anything which we want to learn. And it is great to be honest. And I'm not denying that, nobody is denying that. But at the end of the day, these companies want to make money and they want to make their products and services as addictive as possible. Also, people like us, you and me want to make money as well. And some people can be very unethical and they can do anything to make money and they can abuse you and they can abuse me they can 
exploit your feelings and desires and they can just do basically anything. So, I mean, it's very easy to get lost in this all dreamy and fairy tale perfect opportunities and again, no one is denying that. But we have got to be careful on how we use these services and how we meet people using the services because it is very easy to fake a personality and fake it very well in these kind of platforms, right? So if such a big scam like this happened with you in the name of love, would you be able to trust love again and be in a relationship again? Comment your thoughts and experiences down below. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.